In this video I'm going to do the complete wiring circuits for the headlights. Coming up. So let's start at the beginning. I'm using old fashioned seal beam units. So I've got an old broken seal beam here just to show you the connections on the back. And you can see there's three of them. This one is the earth or the negative. Then there's one for high beam or bright. And another one for low beams or dims. So in its most basic form, we want to get power from the battery to the headlight. Why the light switch it would make sense, wouldn't it? And when we activate the stimmer switch, power would be switched between either the low beam or the high beam. So instead of fighting with a whole lot of loose wires, I'm going to run the 7 core heavy duty trailer cable from the headlights through to the dashboard. Each wire is got a area of 2 square millimeters. So that should be more than adequate. And right here you can see my 7 core cable coming through the firewall through this rubber grommet leading on towards the front. Let me show you. Yeah, you can see the 7 core cable running along the frame rail. Um, it's held firmly in place by some nice P-clips. Okay, you need to look carefully now. <laughs> Just the cable coming along the frame rail. Then it hangs loose. My top front end is open at the moment. So obviously when I close it, I need some slack here for the cable. And the cable is attached there with a P-clip. Okay, you can see right here, I've opened the cable to this point so now it divides up. I've got three, three wires coming off to the left and four going off to the right. So here on the left, the blue one will be for low beams, the red one will be for high beams, and this green one is going to be for my turn signal. I'll have the same going to the other side. Three cables, one for high beam, one for low beam, and one for the right turn signal. And there's one left, which is just going to be a spare for now. The headlight and the indicator or turn signal is earthed right there. So once I've got all my wiring tested, I will cover this up. Same thing here on the right hand side. Three power cables, one for headlight, high beam, headlight low beam, and turn signal. <laughs> and there are the earths or the negatives for the headlight and for the turn signal. Right, so now we're on the inside of my dusty dirty truck. <laughs> and here's the seven core cable coming through the firewall. Um, and we have now got six of these wires connected to lamps up on the front end. This black one is a spare, so we're not using it at the moment. Um, so on the left hand side, one of them is for a turn signal. One of them is high beam, and one of them is low beam. And on the right hand side, one of them is turn signal, one of them is high beam, and one of them is low beam. So if I should apply some power now here, I should have something burning up front. I did use my brains a little bit, and I wrote down the colors in my little book, so I actually know which one goes where. Let's apply some power here and test it and see if it works. I've got a battery in place, and a negative pole, it's connected to the frame rail through this cable. It is also connected to the engine with a separate cable. And this bottom one here is connected to the actual cab so that I know everything is properly grounded. A lot of wiring problems come from bad grounding, bad negatives. Engine is on rubbers, cab is on rubbers. So just to make sure that I get good grounds. I have connected those three components to the negative. But on the positive pole, nothing is connected yet. And that's what I want at this stage. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect a test lead to the positive pole. And my test lead is long enough to get to the inside of the cab. Okay, so here's my test lead. It should be live. So if I connect this to one of my wires here, something should happen up front. Let's pick anyone. Hey, there's a spark there, so something must be working. I don't actually know what it is, but let me consult my little book quickly and then I'll tell you. And I wrote down, let's see. Okay, it says here, red should be the left dead light. High beam. Makes sense for that spark we saw. So why don't you go stand in the front of the truck and I'm going to connect and you tell me if it's right or wrong. Okay, tell me what you see. This should be left turn signal or indicator as we say in South Africa. <laughs> Does it work? No, the truck's left, not your left. Okay, cool, thanks. Next one. This one should be right indicator. A brown one, let's connect. Does it work? Okay, cool, thank you. Right, let's do left headlight high beam. Should be this one here. That works, I can see it from here. Cool. Left headlight low beam. Ah, it's working as well, I can see it. Okay, now we've just got two more to check. That would be the right hand side headlight high beam. Ah, yes. And finally, the right hand side headlight low beam. Sweet, everything works. Awesome. And after testing my wires, I could now put sleeving on them and attach them nicely with P clips so that it's all done properly. If you want to know how to make these P clips, there should be a link up on the screen. So, this is what I use to sleeve the wires. You get them in different sizes. The official name is convoluted tubing. Holy cow, what a name, eh? <laughs> the big advantage, of course, is that you can fit it after you've had your, after you've put your wires in place, because you just slip it over. I'm just doing this to show you. You get the idea. So you can run your wires, and once you're done, you put this over. And if required, you can take the wires out again to inspect them or add more wires, which is great. And of course it looks nice as well. So I much prefer this over insulation tape. Because once you've taped it up and you want to add another wire, <laughs> you've got to run the tape all the way again and it becomes messy and sticky. So I really enjoy using this stuff. Convolute. <laughs> How do you say that word? Convoluted tubing made by Element Titan. I never thought I would know such a clever word. <laughs> so now unfortunately we can't connect these wires directly to the headlight switch because the lights take too much power. I'm going to connect the power here to one of the high beams and I'm hoping that you can see. Can you see the spark? That shows you how much power it requires and the headlight switch can't handle that kind of current. Let's get clever <coughs> and see how much current it's actually drawing the headlight. I'm going to clip on an amp meter here and see if I can show you the reading. I see 6 amps. Which is so now I've connected both headlamps together, the high beams. Give them power again and let's measure the current that's being drawn now and can you see more than 13 amps so the headlight switch would have to switch 13 amps of, of current and it just can't handle that it's too much for it and that's why we have to use this little guy it's called a relay 
They come in different sizes. It's written there on the label. This is a 12 volt 30 amp relay. So it means it can switch up to 30 amps. And all it actually is, it's a switch that can handle larger currents and it's switched electrically. Let me show you what I mean. If you look on the back of the relay, there's a drawing that will show you the connections. So here you can see 85 and 86 is where you connect your low power circuit. That will be to activate the electromagnetic coil that pulls in the switch. And the connections for the switch itself is 87 and 30. So let's cut through all that theoretical bullshit and see if we can make this real. I've got a battery. The negative side is connected to terminal 86. There's my relay. And I've got a wire connected to the positive side that's not connected to any point yet. So the wifey says I should wear a glove for the, these close-up shots. <laughs> she says the wounds on my fingers are gross. So yes, mommy dearest, yes the glove. Close up. Yes, my negative wire coming from the battery connected to terminal 86. Yes, my positive wire coming from the battery. And I'm going to touch that now to terminal 85 and let's see what happens. Can you hear that clicking sound? That's the energy from the battery activating that electromagnetic coil and it pulls in and it closes the switch. So this is the low power circuit that activates the high power switch. So what am I doing? I'm switching the switch inside the relay using electricity. I touch it here, I close that switch. So terminals 87 and 30 is the switch connections itself. So that's where you will connect the circuit that you want to switch. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, one step further. There's my load that I would like to switch. It's already connected on the negative side directly to the battery. On the positive side, it goes via the switch in the relay to the positive side of the battery. So the relay is going to act as the switch to switch the load on. And to activate the switch, I'm going to energize the coil by touching it here to terminal 85. Let's see if it works. There we go. Load comes on. Do you get the idea? So to switch on my heavy current load, I use low current and thin cables. I activate the relay and the load comes on and the light shines. Right, even closer to reality. <laughs> so the blue wires is my light current circuit that activates the switch. And the red wires is my heavy current circuit that provides power to the light. So let's this is my switch, this is going to be my headlight switch. So if I switch this on, what's going to happen? It's going to energize the coil, it's going to close the switch in there, it's going to provide, provide power to the light. Let's see if it works. There you go. Headlights on, headlights off. There's one component still missing. And here it is, the headlight dimmer switch which is essentially just a change over switch because we've only wired up one circuit here remember with headlights we're going to have another lamp here another relay and we want to alternate between the two if I switch my headlight on it works if I activate my dumber switch it, this circuit will go dead and it's changing it over to the other light which I haven't got wired up now. Headlights off. There's one final thing missing in this whole picture to make it completely realistic and that's fuses. Because we've got nothing protecting the circuit here. If anything should go wrong uh, the wire could melt or burn or worse. 
Um, so we need a fuse in this line. This fuse will need to be rated to handle the current required by the lamp. And we would also need a fuse in the blue line to protect that one and that will be a much smaller fuse. So typically this will go via the fuse box of the car, this wire, and this one typically goes to the main fuse block or through the via the main fuse block because of the heavy, heavy currents required to run the headlamps. This is my drawing so bear with me. <laughs> this contraption that's the relay. Inside the relay is a switch and the switch is closed with a little electromagnetic coil here so once I activate this little coil it will pull the switch closed. So look what happens here now. There's the battery. I want my headlights to burn. Power can flow like this but I need to close that switch first. Here's my headlight switch. <coughs> it gets power from the battery I close the headlight switch, I activate the little electromagnetic coil, it closes that switch and the headlights can work. So this little coil does not require a lot of power, small amps, the headlight switch can handle that, but this switch is rated to handle, in my case, 30 amps. And like we measured, the headlights require what was it? A little bit more than 13 amps, right? And let me just add that this is not a complete wiring diagram by any means. It's just a simplified version to show how the relay works. Because remember, we've got actually two sets of lights, high beam, low beam. And we still need to switch between them as well. But okay, so here's a drawing of the whole business. And it's not as complicated as it looks. So bear with me, let's take it from a point. Here's my battery. Power goes from there to the main fuse block. Which has got a 30 amp fuse in. And that goes to each relay. So if the relay can be closed, the power can flow to the headlights, in this case high beams. If we close this relay, the power can flow to the low beams. So the only way to switch these relays would be by closing the headlight switch. So power can flow from the main fuse block through the ignition switch, through the fuse box to the headlight switch. So when ignition is switched on Power is available to the headlight switch. When we close the headlight switch, power can go to the, what do you call this guy, a beam switch, the changeover switch. So in this case, it will flow to this relay, the high beams, closes, and the high beams burn. If we step on that changeover switch, my truck's got a floor mounted one, I love those. Modern cars is typically on the column. Then it changes over to that side. Now we give power to this relay. This one is now opened again because we've removed power. Power is available to this relay, it closes. And the low beams can work. So if you just work through it step by step, I don't think it's that complicated. So my next step will be to install the two relays for the headlight. I made this little panel also from that black Perspex. I'm going to be mounting this to the back of my firewall. Um, so yeah, I've got three relays. High beam, low beam and a spare. <laughs> and I know how it goes, so I might need one down the line, maybe for spotlights or something. So I've just installed the spare now. Um, I've already got the negatives connected to the coils of the relays. There we go. So that's why it will be a ground that will be connected to the chassis. See if I take a peek through the glove box compartment here at my dusty old firewall. <laughs> You'll see my relay panel installed right there. We call this a cabio in South Africa. 
<laughs> so you can see the three relays mounted there. Those red wires are the one that's bringing power from the battery via the main fuse block. And then the, obviously then from the other side of the switch that they are connected to, it leads to the headlight lamps. And then the relay solenoid is obviously activated by the headlight switch right here. So if I pull this out, what's happening? I'm sending power through to the solenoid inside the relay. So that gets activated. The switching slide, the relay closes and power flows through to the headlamps. So they should be on now. Let's go check it out. And indeed, the headlights work. Maybe a little bit weak, <laughs> but I don't think that battery is fully charged. Awesome! And right there is my floor mounted dimmer switch. So if I step on this, we switch from low beam to high beam and back. Ta da! <laughs> so now I can see at night a little. <laughs> I know these fancy boys, they like to use their. LED headlights, but yeah, I'm old school and a tight ass. Them old seal beams is good enough for me. It's not like I'm planning to do much driving at night anyway. Now, so you've noticed there's some experimentations going on up there. Watch out for more on that in a future video. Hey, Oaks, thanks very much for watching my carrying ons out here in the forest. Appreciate it. I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.